Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Max Motivational Message. Today's message is entitled, Sometimes You Just Gotta Press That Button. I hope that this finds everyone doing great. It is Sunday, January 27th at 11.17 a.m. And I find myself in Jasper, Florida. Tomorrow, I'll make my way into Georgia. I want to take a moment and thank you all for your continued support, for keeping me in your prayers, for all the wonderful, kind, and amazing people that I've met on the road so far. All of you have a place in my heart, and it's because of all of you that this walk to date is a success and will continue to be so. Like with every episode of Max Motivational Message, I want to start off by reading a quote written by a Marion Wil Williamson. This quote speaks loud and clear to me and is in my heart. And I believe if you listen to the words, you can also relate to it. And I want to start off every episode with this quote. It's simply entitled, Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are more powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. You playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others around you won't feel insecure. We are all meant to shine as children do. It's just not in some of us, it's in all of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So we have to step away from the fear of failing and have a drive to succeed. That's how I see this, that's how I read this message. And I believe that that can be put into play in every part of our lives. But let me touch on the subject of the title of today's message. Sometimes you just gotta press that button. And let me tell you what it's in reference to. As children, our imagination goes crazy. We can imagine something as, as minute as playing in the sand and we're creating a massive highway with our little trucks and little cars and little Tonka toys and little army men and other characters. As a young lady, she can pretend that her Barbie doll or her Raggedy Ann is Miss Universe, or we can take on the planet. We, we're, we're just, we're indestructible. We have an imagination that has no limits. Back in the 1960s and 70s, when I was a young man, we didn't have Xbox, PlayStation, text messaging, Skype, and all the modern technology we have today. You really had to rely on your own imagination to take you where you wanted to go. Nowadays we have things like World of Warcraft, um, Sims, where you can actually play an actual role on the computer. And there's nothing wrong with that. Please don't misunderstand me. But back in the 60s and 70s, you really had to dig deep into your imagination to take you to places you've never been to before. Even today's modern toys, if you walk down any aisle of Walmart or Target or Kmart or especially Toys R Us, there's all kinds of toys from trucks to motorcycles to cranes to dolls to plastic weapons, to ray guns, to utility belts worn by Batman, and they all have that little um, place on the toy where it says, press here. And it'll shoot a machine gun, or you'll hear 
uh, sounds of a Harley Davidson, or if you push a button, you'll see a crane lift up and it moves from side to side a little bit, in, even inside of its toy container. And that's what today's message is about. As we grow up, of course, we take on many responsibilities. Some of us grow up and become a family member, a husband or a wife or a father or a mother. Some of us will take um, our grandchildren and because our own children for some reason can't or they're just unable to take care of them. Sometimes we take on two or three jobs. Sometimes we want to climb that corporate ladder and we spend 20 hours of the day working our tail off. Some of us work seven days a week, 24 seven, even, even in your sleep, you're working. And I just want to, I just want to make it very clear that sometimes, even if, it's a, even if it's a couple minutes a day, even if you're this deep in work and you're, you have mounds and mounds of paperwork or you have mounds and mounds of things you have to do to succeed and you, you've, got, you've got your fingers in ten different pies at the same time, you've got to take a minute for yourself, even if it's five minutes a day. You've got to step away from it all. And you have to enjoy life. You know, it's one thing to want to chase your dream and get to that mountaintop, but you have to enjoy the journey there. You got to take time to stop and smell the roses. Or you got to take time to stop and just breathe in the air around you. Even if it means just stepping outside your back door to your backyard and just take it all in. It's great to be successful. It's great to have the money you want, the position you want, the home you want, the car you want, the family you want. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't kill yourself to get there. You know, I'm reminded on this walk. Granted, it's not the hardest job in the world. I've worked harder for a lot less than what I'm making now. I remember as a young man I used to dig ditches my brother and I worked for a company called Bicom. This was back, gosh, it's been a few years ago. And they laid a pipeline. It was PVC pipe, two inches in diameter. And it was 20 feet in sections. And we had to um, bury this pipeline. It was six PVC pipes wide, laid side by side, 20 foot sections, from Cape Canaveral, Florida, to Jacksonville, Florida, and if, if the memory, if my memory serves me correctly, it was like 350 miles. And I may have the numbers wrong, it's been many years since we did this, but I remember days in Florida where the humidity will kill you if you're not careful. But we would have to carry, we had a machine that would dig the ditch for us, and then we'd follow behind it by laying the pipes on the ground, and then we had to take PVC glue and, and glue end to end. Every 20 feet bend over and glue. Walk 20 feet bend over and glue. Walk 20 feet bend over and glue. In the heat and the rain and the humidity a few times through areas that look like swamp. We worked our tails off. We made great money doing it. But we worked our tails off. But you know what? We, we still took time to enjoy it. No matter whether you're, you work in an office or you work digging a ditch or you work building houses or you work, you volunteer in a soup kitchen, or you work um, in a factory. You can work all your life. You can work your fingers to the bone. But you, you know one thing you'll never see? You'll never see on a headstone that would say something to the effect of, this person worked 80 hours a week. You really have to learn to enjoy life. Many times on this walk, and this is one of the great things for me on this walk, I, I love this walk in so many different reasons and levels. Of course, number one, it's for our veterans. We have to get the word out. We have to put our, our veterans back in the spotlight where I, I believe they should be. Number two, of course, we're raising funds for veterans that are homeless and wounded. But I also get the experience, the adventure of this walk. 
the things I've been doing this for a little more than 14 months and the things I've seen the people I've met the experiences I've had even the bad ones I remember walking north through Rahway, New Jersey last it was I think it was like October or November of 2011 and we and they got hit with about a foot and a half of snow so for two days I walked through snow I was cold miserable wet as cars drove by me even at five miles an hour to you know because of the ice it splashed slush up on me I'd be more cold and I'm pulling my cart behind me it was one day where I had an escort the other day I did not but even in all that misery I love what I was doing I love the adventure of it well I was in South Carolina and I had walked through a part of the country there that was just magnificent. It, it looked like for about the first five or six hours on my walk that day, every place I looked, it looked like a Hallmark card. It just had that majestic look to it. And I remember one spot in particular. It was a pond and there was... Uh, Told, with told the li lilies <laughs> or, or frog pads, I forget what you call them, you'll forgive me if I get this wrong. Um, there were white swan in, in, in the pond, there were fish you could see coming up to eat off the surface, and I stood there and I just gazed at it. I was just in awe. Well, the next day I had the opportunity to do a speaking engagement at a local church, and I spoke about that spot and how it was just, it, it was. It was so quiet and serene. You can hear the birds singing and you can watch the fish and the swan. It was just incredible. Well, a woman came up to me after my speaking engagement and she said, Mac, I've lived here for eight years and I drive past up and down that road you described that you walked on yesterday every day for eight years to and from work. And I do it at 55 miles an hour and I've never seen that spot. That's the point I want, I want to get across. Sure, go after your goal. Get to that mountaintop where you want to be, where you're content and you're satisfied that your goals in life are completed to that point. But enjoy the, enjoy the journey there. I get to see this world, I'm sorry, this, this country at three miles per hour. I get to engage with nature. I get to smell the the, the fall air and feel the warm breeze across my face and I mean granted I have to walk through thunderstorms and snow and high winds and heat and humidity um, if you've been on if, if you've been watching my uh, YouTube videos for any extended amount of time you'll remember that when I was in South Carolina every time I would stop I'd get a big old face full of gnats but that's okay because I enjoy what I'm doing they say that if you, if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in your life. So also, not only take the time to take it all in and breathe in that air and experience what's around you, but go for a goal that you love to do. And it's not always going to be easy. When I first started this walk over 14 months ago, my cart would fall apart. Wheels would fall off, handles would snap off. I'd be walking down the road, and I would hear this ding, 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 and look over, and a piece just fell off again. But I never stopped. I had to tweak my cart over a few times. I repainted it. I adjusted the height and the width and stuff. I added stuff, took, took stuff off. I trimmed the fat where it became lighter for me. But I never quit because my mountaintop is going to be Arlington Cemetery when I finish this walk. But I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, I often get razzed by some people on Facebook. Well, Mac, you only walk six miles today. That's nothing. I can do that in my sleep. Or Mac, you'll just all these razzing to me, but that's okay because I, I'm 51 years old and as much as I love what I'm doing, I'm not going to kill myself out here doing it. So if I just get one mile in tomorrow, or the next day, or even a half a mile, that's one mile I didn't have in the day before. But I love what I'm doing, and I take the time to enjoy it. I remember, again, back to that day, those days my brother and I worked for Bicom. 
We worked seven days a week, and we worked hard, and we made great money, but we also took the time to enjoy life. We would take five or ten minutes and just stop and just take it in. We're only given one life on this, on this planet. And whatever your drive is to get to where you want to be at in life, don't forget to enjoy the journey. That's the most important part about, about getting where you want to go. I said it was the last Sunday or Sunday before that, that the greatest um, reward about achieving your goal is crossing that line. But it's almost probably more important to enjoy the ride. My dad, um, sometimes we would travel as family to, to go to whatever, whether it be a museum or a picnic or a camping out, whatever we did. <laughs> He had this weird habit. He wanted to get them get there fast and enjoy yourself once you get there. And that, that's probably true at some certain level, but I'm a firm believer in you got to enjoy the trip on your way there. Life is just too short not to enjoy everything in life. So whatever your goal is, it, whether you want to have a big, whether you want a big family, or you want to buy a home, or you want to climb the corporate ladder, or you want to make X amount of money per year, whatever, whether it's a small goal or a large goal, enjoy the journey there. This walk that I'm on has really changed me. One of the things that's really brought to, to my kind of slap me in the face kind of thing. Before my walk started, excluding my family and close friends, I really didn't know how to trust anybody. I'd been taken for a lot of things. I'd been used and lied to and conned. And it was hard for me to trust people. Well, everybody on this walk has been so amazing. I've done a 180 on my life. Not true, I'm still cautious out here. But I'm more open to friendships now. And when you open yourself to what life has to offer, in my case, perfect strangers lending a hand, it makes life so much more rewarding. There's a big difference between surviving and living. And from a personal perspective, you got to live. you got to take bites out of life and enjoy it. Because it's really amazing out here. It's really remarkable what I feel God has, is, has me experiencing and will continue to experience. And I know rough roads are coming. In the first 14 months on this walk I've had blisters and heel spurs and bad weather and cart malfunctions and my best laid plans didn't always work out and fortunately there was always a plan B and everybody from motel managers to fire departments, police departments, perfect strangers, families and friends have always been there to, to lend me a hand to help me continue down this road that I'm walking. And I can never thank everybody enough. It is, it is your love and persistence that keep me going and doing this and will we'll continue to do it. But I'm making sure that I'm enjoying this. And I know that down the, down the road for me, there's going to be more challenges. I know there's going to be a point eventually where I'm going to, pardon me, where I'm going to be walking down um, in the middle of the desert in the Midwest. And I'm going to have to be careful and plan my route carefully. And there may be times where I'm four or five days or even ten days between towns. But it's my attitude and I believe the attitude that all of us have to obtain to be a success in whatever we want to do. Even if it means as silly and as ridiculous as this might sound, remember when you were a kid and you used to bounce on the bed? Bounce on it now! You I believe we really have to keep in touch with our inner child. There's nothing wrong 
was still having snowball fights or bouncing on the bed or, or take a half an hour out of your day and visit the nearest Toys R Us and walk up and down those aisles and just push all those buttons on the Raggedy Ann dolls, the cranes, the motorcycles, the trucks, the cars. Just enjoy what you're doing. And there's nothing wrong, even if it looks ridiculous, of doing a happy dance in the middle of a road. Who cares what people think? Jan no, excuse me, dance like you really enjoy it. Live life, live life as if you really enjoy it. Take it all in. Be silly from time to time. Who cares? I mean, granted, as adults, we have responsibilities. I'm not suggesting we step away from that, especially if you're a parent or you're responsible for a, a company or um, workers or you have a large responsibility. We have, we have to maintain that, that level of maturity to, to make sure that's a, a success. But at the same time, be silly, have fun, be humorous. Squirt somebody at work with a squirt gun. Who cares? Enjoy life. Just because we grow older doesn't mean we have to grow old. Stay in touch with your inner child. One thing I've said repeatedly in every video, and I'll probably use this example a lot, it's a proven fact in most any medical journal you read. It simply says that laughter is the best medicine because it releases endorphins in your, from your head and it just helps you fight off diseases. So even if you're doing 18, 20 hour days in an office or in a factory or driving a truck from coast to coast, find places in your life where you can enjoy it, where you can take a few minutes a day, even if you have to do it before you go to work. I guess the choice is simple. You can, you can either learn to get up earlier and be goofy and enjoy life or stay what you're currently doing and not enjoy it. I hope this has all made sense to you. I'm just simply saying take the time out of every day to be goofy, to have fun, to enjoy what you're doing. If you're in the kind of job where you love what you do, and there's hardly any stress, then add to it. Go to Chuck E. Cheese and play their games. Get on the computer and play some silly, goofy video game. Go to a comedy club and laugh your guts out. Just enjoy life. Remember, sometimes you just gotta press that button. I wanna thank you all again for your time. I hope that this help, will help someone today. I want to thank you for your motivational and inspirational messages, your encouraging messages. Many of you post on my wall every day with Bible verses or just a positive thought or encouraging words, and it helps me more than you can ever imagine. We still have a good five, six, maybe even ten years of walking ahead of us. And I'm going to take my time. I am not on any written in stone schedule out here. I'm going to enjoy what I do. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And as I've said before, all of you have my solemn word that even if I have to crawl on my hands and knees, bloody, beaten, and battered, I will cross that finish line. Well, thank you for taking the time to listen to my motivational message today. I hope it's helped. Please feel free to leave comments, questions, suggestions, and I hope you'll tune in next week for another Max, motiva Max Motivational Message. Yeah, tongue twister. I love you all very much. All of you have a piece of my heart. To my baby girl as always, mwah, daddy loves you very much. So until tomorrow, Simplify.